Hey everyone, I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> I'm letting this get started um, and build up a few viewers before we get started, but uh, I am excited to be able to uh, zero to hero side hustles, physical side hustles that you can start today. Not only are these ones that you can start, but you can actually um, find some that may fit your parameters that you have for uh, creating a lifestyle that you're looking forward to living, you know, because at the end of the day, we want to make more money. That's what side hustles are for. But we want to make sure that we identify the ones that are um, the ones that are uh, primary focus, you know, the ones that actually can give us the best return for the time that we're willing to put in. Or in this case, the type of side hustle that physically uh, we can use our skills to produce um, you know, what are our results, what we're looking for, what we're trying to, uh, what we're trying to accomplish. And, uh, with that said, this is the first time I've used this particular live dashboard that, uh, Facebook gives us the option to use. And, um, so I am ready and excited to be able to share this with you. Uh, we've got a couple of people that have jumped on board and I am going to get started and uh, to start out, the very first thing I want to say is welcome. Thank you for taking time to actually commit to producing more for yourself or your family. And with that, I applaud you because it's not easy to wake up every day and do a job or wake up and do a side hustle. It's not easy, but it can be so rewarding if you're willing to take some of the steps and some of the principles that we're going to be going over and implementing them in a way to help you grow and become better at whatever you want to accomplish. Today, we're going to talk about physical side hustles, the pitfalls and the rewards from uh, each example. And um, as you are aware, there's tons and tons and tons of ways to make money. And today we're only going to highlight a few of them so that we can talk about some of the good, the bad, and the ugly of that. Now, what is a physical side hustle? A physical side hustle means that um, you're willing to use your physical body to generate money. Yes, your physical body to make money. <laughs> physical work. Um, you're going to trade hours for dollars. Now, Time versus money, hours for dollars. What does that really mean? You know, what does that, what does that entail? And the way you want to look at a side hustle is how much time does it take from you on a hourly or daily basis in order to generate money? So if, for example, your side hustle is, um, you know, pet sitting, walking pet people with their pets, then it may require an hour a day per pet. So for you to spend one hour of your time, you have to equivalent that to some type of revenue, some type of, and understanding that you only have 24 hours in a day to make money. So as we go through this process, I want you to keep in mind how much time do I have to invest in order to make this money? And then is it rewarding enough for me to want to do that particular side hustle? Not all side hustles are meant for everyone, but some people are really, really good at what their side hustle is. So they're able to do that particular hustle in less time and they're able to charge more money for it. So we want to, um, as we go through this, we just really want to identify in your mind, say, how much time would it take for me to learn this? And then is there enough money after I learn it for me to sustain, sustain a profitable side hustle? Here are a list of physical side hustles that you can earn money from today. Now, mind you, these are physical. These will require you to uh, touch, uh, walk, talk. You know, it's going to require some physical body effort, okay? And um, the first one we're going to talk about is Uber. And I, I personally do not Uber, but I do have quite a few friends that utilize Uber as a tool uh, to make money. And I have friends that make anywhere from 
$300 a month to $3,000 a month based on a couple of parameters, such as what size of a vehicle they offer and how often they're willing to drive that vehicle and the territory in which that they choose to drive their vehicle and offer rideshare programs. The next one is DoorDash. Um, Uber also offers a similar service to this, Uber Eats. But DoorDash is a wonderful opportunity if you don't really want to deal with a lot of people, uh, if you don't want them in your vehicle, uh, you're able to sign up for DoorDash and you become a delivery service for goods and uh, products. So it may be that you would go to a restaurant and you would pick up someone's food, you would deliver it to their home, leave it at their door, you don't have to interact with them, and then you receive a uh, commission slash payment for that particular delivery. Now I know people doing DoorDash that make anywhere from 20 bucks a day for 30 minutes of work all the way up to people who make $300 a day uh, for a lot of deliveries and or the deliveries that they make, those people have a large purchase. So they may be purchasing $100 worth of food where the driver's able to obtain $10 for that delivery. Well, if you can do that two, three times an hour, that's $30, $40 an hour, $20, $30, $40 an hour that you're able to acquire just by simply utilizing your vehicle and helping people with the convenience of having food delivered to their home or business. Instacart. Instacart's a really cool service that also, similar to Uber and DoorDash, allows you to go and become a shopper for the customer. So the customer actually uses the app, they pick the groceries that they want, whether it be from any of the grocery chains or have signed up for it, but you'll, you'll show up, you'll uh, get a list of products that the customer's purchasing, the, excuse me, yeah, you'll get a list of the products the customer wants to purchase, and then they go around the store and they actually find those products and most times, if that product's not available, they'll recommend another product to you that you can simply swap out or whatever. And then you, as the Instacart uh, person, would deliver those groceries to the person's door, and then you are done with that person, and then you can go back and pick up another customer. The average order on groceries is much higher than it is if someone orders from Uber, Eats, or DoorDash. So your income potential for the amount of time is greater because the purchase price is so much higher. I know people that do Instacart and they make anywhere from $40 an hour to $60 an hour. So if you're looking for a side hustle just to make an extra, you know, hundred bucks a day, here's a great way for a couple of hours a day to be able to generate revenue just by delivering groceries to people that need assistance. Now a painter. Now, you may say, well, that's a big stretch from being a delivery person of some sort to a painter. But the reason why I chose painter is because it takes a minimal amount of expertise and tools in order to make your hustle. For an example, you only really need a paint roller and a paint brush and the customer can provide the paint for you and you just apply the product for them. So the entry level to becoming a painter, a physical side hustle is very, very low where most painters charge anywhere from a dollar to $2 a, a foot. Um, so an average bedroom, you're looking at a hundred to $200 to paint it and they can provide the paint. If you're street savvy enough to, that you want to handle getting the paint for them, so be it, you can mark it up and create a little additional revenue. But being a painter for home or commercial or residential has a very low threshold that can return a high, can, can return high profits for the time that you invest. So a painter, believe it or not, is actually a profitable way with minimal skill and minimal tools uh, and you can generate a really cool side hustle. Lawn care, believe it or not, Everybody that owns a home has to have someone, either they do it themselves or they have to have someone do it. In our area, we have a lot of retirees, so there is a large demand for people to help with lawn maintenance, lawn care, because 
the physical fitness of the customers in our area is is minimal. So they don't want to go out and mow their grass when it's 100 degrees out uh, just because for health reasons, you know, it's not good for them or people that have allergies or whatever it may be. But it's minimal expense to buy a push lawnmower and a you could get an electric weed eater or a standard gas powered weed eater. But you have a maybe a hundred and fifty to two hundred dollar investment. And with your first three, you know, properties that you would maintain, you would quickly be able to get your investment back. Some of the downfalls of lawn care would be, you know, the maintenance of the equipment that you use and then uh, the fuel uh, for that. Uh, you need a, a physical way to be able to get to the jobs. So you would need some type of transportation uh, to, to get to the jobs. <clears throat> but lawn care has a lot of upside benefit. Uh, one of the downside benefits also is that it's seasonal. So um, th it does have some downsides, but it's very profitable. A lot of people, and I'm sure we all know somebody or have done it ourselves, have mowed grass in order to you know, make some extra money or whatever it may be. Maybe you do your own. But that's an easy way to pick up a couple of neighbors, even at a better deal. And while you're doing yours, you know, why not make a few extra bucks at the same time? All right, a personal shopper. Now, a personal shopper is similar to what Instacart, DoorDash, and Uber Eats is. But that may go a little bit further. You may actually help people whenever it comes to going and getting the medication they may need, someone that's elderly. Or it may be that someone has an event coming up and they would like for you to go to Costco and help them purchase the items that are needed and, you know, uh, bring them back to them. Uh, it may be that, you know, they want some they want you to help them purchase uh, decor for one of their bedrooms or their living room or whatever it may be. Um, I have been a personal shopper for people whenever it comes to vehicles. In the past, one of my side hustles was I called myself a car broker. So I run this little ad in the classified in the newspaper and uh, it simply said, hey, I'll help you find your next vehicle. I'll negotiate the price for you. Uh, I charge a flat fee of this. Give me a call. And believe it or not, I ran that ad in the newspaper and uh, it was four little lines or whatever, but I ended up getting like six or eight people. Well, what was cool about that was those people agreed to give me a hundred bucks because I would do all the legwork. They would tell me what type of vehicle and then I would call around back then. We didn't have a lot of internet, but I would call around to all the dealerships until I found the exact vehicle they were looking for that was in the parameters they wanted. And then I would negotiate with the dealer to get the customer a better deal. The customer would then give me $100 for my time and my effort. I also worked out a deal with the dealer. So once I beat them up and negotiated or whatever, I said, if I bring somebody to buy this car, would you guys give me $100? And they were like, heck yeah, we'll be happy to do that. I said, like, great. So I, the buyer would give me $100 and then the dealer would give me $100. So for each customer, I averaged about 200 bucks. But you can be a personal shopper for anything, okay? All right, a, pers a professional organizer. Some of you ladies and gentlemen out there uh, are OCD and you thoroughly love the way something looks when it's really neat and packaged and, and so forth. Well, believe it or not, there is a high demand for people to come to their home and help them just move stuff around, put it in containers, help them get rid of stuff that they don't need, organize the cabinets, organize closets, whatever it may be. They really need an assistant and someone that mentally can envision how, how it can look whenever it's organized and easily to find the items that the customer would want to find at a later time. So a personal organizer is really cool. Um, I do recommend that some of you ladies that are out there, uh, really simple post an ad on marketplace and just say, Hey, look, does anybody need help organizing? I, I got some time this week. I'd love to come give you a price and help you out. So great little side hustle there that requires physical, physical effort, home improvement. So, um, there's all types of different of home improvement projects that you could, uh, entertain. But if you're not a skilled carpenter, don't, you know, advertise yourself as such, you know, find out what your skill set is, what you're capable of doing. And it may be that you're capable of hanging pictures. Okay. Believe it or not, there are people out there that have pictures they bought that never get hung because 
They don't know how to do it. They don't have the tools. They don't have whatever it takes. But that would be a simple way to help someone improve their home. It may be that they purchase a flat screen TV and you are knowledgeable enough to install the bracketing on the wall so that it can support their new flat screen TV. So home improvement is a great way to get yourself out there and uh, find some customers for a good side hustle. A personal trainer. Now, I know what all of us are thinking. I don't take care of myself. I don't work out. But believe it or not, it's not difficult to be a personal trainer. Most of the times, unfortunately, and fortunately, personal trainers really need to be a motivator. They're just somebody that will show up with you and they create a process for you to start physically doing something. It may be that your personal training that you offer is really we just we take walks in our community. And, um, you know, we, I come to you and we just go walk or, you know, I, I come over and I help you stretch or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, you know, you can get certified in personal trainer and so forth. But as long as we have human beings, there will always be a need for people. There will always be people that have a need to improve their lifestyle, their physical being, whatever it may be. So personal trainers are a great way. If you're the type of person that already works out, then you just need to figure out how to create a simple little course. And then you just say, Hey, look for, you know, I'm trying to find five people at 20 bucks a pop. And, uh, for five hours a week, I'm going to, you know, meet you at the gym and I'm going to help you out. There's, you know, hundred bucks right there just to go hang out at the gym for an hour, which you're going to do anyway, already photography. So although photography has um, a little more of an expense to get into because the camera, um, it also has a little issue with the knowledge, the knowing how to take the photos and stuff. But believe it or not, photography is a great way to make money. Um, doesn't mean like traditionally what people think photography, you go to events or weddings and take pictures. But if you have an eye for beauty, you can take pictures of things that you find beautiful and there are multiple websites that you can list your picture at and then people will buy that for marketing purposes um, or they may buy it to have it printed for their home so photography is a really cool way to be able to um, have fun be creative and make money at the same time walking dogs now we've talked about this one earlier but Everybody that has a pet at some point has to go somewhere where they can't take their pet and they could use someone to trust that can just, you know, walk the dog, put some water, some food out for them and, uh, you know, spend a little time with their animals so they don't get lonely. Great side hustle. If you like dogs, that's the one that I would go for for a little quick hustle. All right. Car detailing. I'm sure most of us on this uh, video, uh, most of us watching this video have a car, have a vehicle. You know, when we, where we live in the area we live in the South, it's pretty much mandatory in order to be able to, you know, go after, um, go after your career that you choose or whatever you want to do, because you got to get there. You know, at the end of the day, you got to be able to get to wherever you want to go, whether it's to buy groceries or whatever, because we're spaced out. Some of your bigger cities may not have as many cars, but car detailing is a very popular and creative way that you could do it at your house and you could easily just help people keep their car clean. Um, great way, very, one of the very first businesses I ever started was a car detailing business. I was mobile, so I had a little truck, a little sprayer, and uh, I would go to real estate companies and wash cars in the parking lot. And, um, you know, I enjoyed doing it. Um, and it was a good hustle for me. It actually taught me how to network and I was able to meet quite a few people doing that. Baking. So some of you ladies out there and gentlemen that enjoy cooking and, uh, you love that process. You can easily offer the opportunity to cook meals for your other, for your friends or for, um, you know, family, whatever it may be baking. So goods, cookies, cakes, things of that nature. So you can, if you have a talent for that, you will find people that have a need for it. Um, baking is something that you do with your home. It doesn't take a, a whole lot of effort. It just takes some skill and some knowledge and, uh, the willingness to taste, <laughs> But um, you, you can easily start baking. And, um, you know, then you just get to the point where you say, all right, hey, I make these cupcakes. And then you find 10 businesses that once every Friday they want cupcakes delivered to their business that are for the employees and so forth. And then you got 10 businesses spending 40 bucks a week with you and you drop them all off on 
you know, Friday. So bacon is a really cool way. If people love sweets, it's always an easy sale. <laughs> All right, cleaning homes. Um, I've done this. Uh, a lot of my friends have done this, but um, cleaning homes is a great way to help people that have physical disabilities and or just have so much money that they just want to pay somebody else to do it because they hate doing it. Um, a lot of times you can uh, find that uh, a typical home to clean it is anywhere from 65 to $500. So if you're needing a side hustle to make an extra two, $300 a month, uh, find two or three condos to clean or two or three houses. And so for three hours a month, you go and you clean those properties and you just made enough money to make your car payment or whatever it may be. And then that's an easy business to expand because there's such a need, such a demand for people cleaning that um, that particular side hustle could turn into something rather, rather profitable uh, as time goes. And that does require physical uh, interaction. All right, woodworking and crafts. Are you the type of person that likes to go to Michael's or maybe go to uh, one of these craft stores and you see all this cool stuff in there and your mind's just blown away with what you could go and paint or what you could go and create at your home? Maybe you like doing wreaths. Maybe you're good at doing bows. Maybe you're good at doing whatever it is. But um, that's a great way to uh, create something with your creativity and then you're able to list that as a product for sale. And there's a lot of cool websites out there. I'm sure you guys have heard of Pinterest and Etsy and so forth, the arts and crafts community. It's amazing what you can do if you have something that you create that's pretty cool. And even then, if you don't have something that's cool, all you have to do is go on there and get some ideas from people that are doing something else. Go find some, somebody that takes popsicles and makes something cool out of popsicles. And if, they sell, if they've sold a thousand of those little popsicle coffee mug holders or whatever, then you know that you could at least sell a couple of them a week, right? I mean, come on, think about it. Pretty cool. So crafts, woodworking, um, skill sets that um, allows you to take something raw and turn it into something. Uh, there's always a demand for people that would like that. Maybe you like to cross stitch, like my grandmother loves it. You know, Afghans, whatever. She, she loves all that stuff. All right, so... All right, I got another one here, sewing and alterations. Did you know how hard it is to find somebody that can just sew or that can uh, do alterations for hemming pants or uh, skirts or, you know, repairing something that's cool that you've had for a long time? Believe it or not, you can offer a service where, hey, I'll bring me your items, I'll do that for you. I mean, that's a great way to you know, to pick up some money and sit at a house and, you know, just do alterations. Most of your dry cleaning places down here uh, offer that, but they don't have enough people to do, do it. So a lot of times they'll subcontract out to local people that are retired or not retired, but people that have the ability to do it, uh, helping him and doing hymns and stuff like that. I'm not really a, a sewing or alterations guy, but hey, you may be. All right, resume writing. So... Uh, unfortunately, at this particular time, uh, we have a lot of job openings uh, in our country, and we have a lot of positions that need to be filled. Do you know how many people actually know how to fill out a resume? Like a really good one, like one that when you read it, you go, huh, that was intriguing. Like, this is someone I'd like to possibly hire to work for my company. Well, it's very possible that you simply could just help other people write their resumes out and do it for them. You know, you take the information, do it over the phone, whatever it may be, you type it out and then help them acquire a position. And by doing so, you could charge a fee, 20 bucks, $40, whatever, you know, according to how much detail you want to put into it. But helping people write resumes is a great way and it's fulfilling because you know you're helping other people uh, accomplish something great. All right, a travel planner. Are you the type of person that's always watching the History Channel or the Travel Channel or whatever it is? Did you know that it's easy to um, sign up to be a travel agent and to help people with their travel plans? So maybe you help them find cheaper bookings or you help them get discounts on uh, shows, you know, whatever it may be. But helping people plan travel is uh, an awesome, rewarding way uh, for, uh, for a good side hustle. Like uh, to me, that's the ultimate, you know, you, you sign up as an affiliate with a travel planner company and holy cow, you know, before you know it, you're. You're helping people go all over the all over the world. All right, small engine repair. If you're the type of person that is mechanically inclined, 
uh, everybody that has that weed eater and that lawnmower, or they have uh, some type of small engine uh, that, you know, I won't say like big car stuff or nothing like that, just small, like literally like one foot by two foot, three foot by two foot or whatever, small stuff, you know, something that you could put 20 of them in a room. So if you had a garage, you could actually set up a small engine repair shop. And most of the time it's simple stuff, you know, it's a carburetor, it's a spark plug, you know, it's, it's, it's simple stuff. Um, or just letting them know that, you know, that particular engine has gone bad and it needs to be replaced. But that type of hustle pays anywhere from 50 just for a, um, a 25 to $50 just to look at it, like a, an inspection fee, all the way up to a couple of hundred dollars. So if you got two or three small engines a day, you could easily, you know, produce two to three hundred dollars a day, which, you know, three hundred and sixty dollars, three hundred eighty dollars a day, I believe is a hundred thousand a year. So something like that. All right. Pressure washing. Low entry cost, not very expensive, not really physical, um, but, you know, it does take some physical effort. But pressure washing, now that I've said pressure washing, everywhere you go for the next 24 hours, you're going to notice how dirty everything is, whether it be driveways, walkways, buildings, awnings, cars, whatever it may be. You can pick up a pressure washer for two, three hundred bucks, um, a water hose and um, some fuel. And within your first 72 hours, you could easily make all of your money back. Plus, um, this particular uh, hustle, you know, is going to be a daytime hustle. There won't be a lot of nighttime pressure washing. So if you have a daytime job, this one may be a little bit more difficult for you. But that doesn't mean on a Saturday, Sunday, you couldn't go knock out a church, you know, walkway and stuff for an extra $200, $300. So don't discredit pressure washing. All right, now how to get started, because we've talked about some cool ways that you could, uh, you know, utilize your physical being to create money. Now, all right, Mike, I, I, in my mind, I got one. I'm, I'm ready to do something. Uh, what do I do? How do I get started? You know, I want to be a pressure washer. All right. Well, very first, you got to write out what you hope to accomplish from your side hustle. Okay, you, you got to have a game plan. If you and I are going to go from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina to California, we need a map. We need some guidance. We need some direction. We need something to keep us on track. So that way we don't end up in Texas versus California. So write out what you hope to accomplish. You know, my side hustle with my side hustle, I hope to accomplish this. I hope to accomplish a residual monthly income of $1,000, okay? With my side hustle, I hope to acquire repeat customers, okay? That can generate $300 a month, whatever it is. But you first got to be willing to write it out. What I'd like to do is I like to take little index cards and I like to write them out on there and I'll duplicate them. So I'll write the same thing on like two of them. I'll put one on my mirror in my bathroom and I'll put one in my car and I, ha I have one here in my office also to stack them. But what that does is that allows me every day just, you know what, like while I'm sitting here and I'm on, before I get my day started, like, all right, let me, let me look at the map. Let me, let me just, all right, this is something I want to do. This is something I want to do. This is something I want to do. Okay. And it helps me, it helps me, you know, keep my focus, but you must write or type this out. If you're not willing to commit whatever you want to do to paper, you will not commit to doing it, period. Okay? I promise you that 1,000%. No good plan is ever executed without somebody writing something down. It has to be done. Okay? All right. No one ever found a treasure without first having a map. How about that? So let's find your treasure. Let's create a map. You are not the exception to this rule. All right. So I myself have taken on many endeavors and I can tell you emphatically with if the ones that I failed in was the ones that I was least prepared roadmap wise. So if my roadmap wasn't well defined, I failed at it every time. Okay. All right. What do you want and when do you want it? So now that we've created a roadmap, when do you want to get to California? When do you want to get to your goal of your monthly revenue or how many customers or how many days a week do you want to be busy? What do you want and when do you want it? You got to put a time and a date on it. Okay, guys? Which side hustle is best for you? What dollar amount do you hope to make 
and in what time frame do you hope to make it in? Can the side hustle you pick give you what you desire? So that's where you need to be honest with you. So for an example, let's say you decided that I'm going to become a painter. And you say, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a little roadmap. I'm going to write down that I want to make $2,000 a month from painting. Painting um, people's inside of people's homes, for an example. All right. Well, guess what? After I write this stuff out, and I'm going to play devil's advocate, but after I write all this stuff out, I realize that I don't like the smell of paint. So guess what? That's not a side hustle for me. It's not going to give me what I desire because I physically can't do it. <laughs> I can't stand the smell of fresh paint. Now, you may be okay. I am okay with it. But that's whenever you write this out, you're going to start identifying the pitfalls. So that way you eliminate the ones that don't make sense. I don't mean just mentally go, well, I don't want to do that. Or uh, mentally, I, I can't do this or whatever. We're going to write it out. Okay, we're going to write it out. We're going to put our pros and our cons on there. All right? Write down what holds you back from getting the hustle started. Everybody that wants to make money always has something that holds them back. And it's always mental. Whatever it is, whether it be a motivation to do it or it be um, the desire to do it or the passion to do it, it's all mental. Because I can tell you without question that if I told you that, your mother's uh, house is on fire right now, you would stop listening or watching this video and you would immediately call her or you would go to her. You would take action. You, you wouldn't care whatever it took. You would go try to help your mother, okay? All right, maybe some of us, some of you wouldn't, but you would go help them, okay? Now, what is it that's going to put that burning desire in you so that you don't stop once you start? You have to identify that. Like, why? What is it? What do you want? You know, money's, money's not what you really want at the end of the day. It's what you desire. It's the freedom you desire. It's the travel. It's the new car. It's something that you want. Maybe it's free time, but there's something that you want. Now, what stops you from getting it? Because as of today, before we started this video, you had the willingness to want to learn, to do something. Now, what is stopping you from accomplishing it today? All right? Well, I can tell you what it is. Writing it out. If you're not willing to write it out, go back and watch Netflix. Go back and watch TV. Go do something else. Because until you make a roadmap, you will not get to California. All right, I'm done harping on that. Do your research. How many people in your area are doing your new hustle? What do they charge? And how successful are they doing it? You know, if your hustle is going to be painting stick figures on Coca-Cola cans and nobody in your area or in the country is doing that, I don't recommend that being a hustle, okay? But for an example, if your hustle is becoming a painter and you find out there's only three painting companies in your town and you find out that they're booked out to do a single bedroom for two months or three months, oh my God. You just found a niche where you could become a painter because you can offer it in the next five days. So you instantly just become a business. You instantly become a hustle. Okay. So if the other people, you want to find out who's doing your hustle in your area, what do they charge? And then how successful are they at doing it? Because there's been many times that I found hustles that I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do this. I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it or whatever. And I found out when nobody's really doing it. Well, all right, is that good or bad? Well, it was bad because there wasn't a demand for it. So, or there was, uh, there was, uh, there was a demand, but there were so many companies that they were competing for the same people. So that really wouldn't be my best side hustle. I may love to paint, but that don't mean that's my best side hustle. All right, how to stay motivated and stay on track. And at the end of the day, all side hustles require this. You got to stay motivated and you got to stay on track. What free software can you use to help with the process? I like a, a website called Trello, uh, T-R-E-L-L-O, -L -L and um, I can't really show you the screen. I wish I could, but Trello is really cool. It, it, imagine, you know, how um, sticky notes, you, you know, you got a sticky note and you stick it on the wall and you stick another one under it and you stick another one under it and before you know, you got all this 
mess. Well, Trello is similar to what those sticky notes would look like, but it's on the internet and you can move them around <laughs> and you can edit them. You can make notes to them and so forth. So it'll help you keep on track and help keep your roadmap going. All right, Slack. So Slack is a messaging system. You know how whenever you uh, text with say um, your friend and uh, you guys are talking about, you know, the ball game this weekend or whatever. And um, you have like a two hour, uh, an hour long, back and forth conversation in text, right? Well, the sad part about text is, is it pushes everything like way up in your phone and you got to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. And you're like, oh yeah, that's where our dinner plans that we made before this baseball conversation and there's the time and there's where we're gonna be at. Well, what we wanna do with Slack is we wanna create a filing cabinet digitally. And then inside that filing cabinet, we're gonna create folders. So Slack allows you to create folders for each project that you're gonna be working on, okay? So Slack is a really cool tool and it's free, okay? So guys, these are free tools. And then the last one is Google Drive. So if you have a Gmail, you automatically have a Google Drive. Google Drive has the uh, programs that you may have heard before similar to uh, Word, uh, was it, uh, Word and a Spreadsheet and a PowerPoint and things like that. Well, Google offers these exact same programs for free if you have a Gmail. These programs will help you out because as your hustle grows, you're gonna to wanna to keep notes on where your customers are, who your customers are. I mean, who they are, where they are, you know, referrals. Like you keep a little spreadsheet in there and like, all right, I took this much money in in January, February. You can do your accounting in here. You can do all kinds of stuff in there. You can create a little presentation for your side hustle, so on and so on. But Google Drive, without question, is an amazing tool. So with that said, I have been on here for 35 minutes and I typically don't like to go over 25 minutes, but if you're on here, I greatly appreciate it. I'd like for you to take the time to complete the survey below. I'm going to uh, be giving away a Mac computer, which will be awesome because you'll be able to use all of these free programs on this. I'm actually gonna set it up on there. So whenever I do give it away, it's already gonna have this stuff built into it to help you grow and develop your side hustle. Um, click this link below if you would. Also, if you don't mind in the comments, just drop a, hey, Flew Artie, this was cool. I wish you would have talked about this, or man, that opened my eyes. Any positive, constructive criticism, I'm open for and willing to listen to, because the only way that I can get better is by hearing feedback from people that we're gonna be trying to help. All right, now, let's plug our next video. So today we talked about physical hustles, okay? So physical hustles are things that require your body, right? Things that you are going to have to physically go and do. Where our next video is going to talk about digital side hustles. Digital side hustles, although it requires some effort, they are, digital side hustles are things that you can do on the internet and typically you don't have to deal with it physically other than whatever digital side hustle you create. And I've got a bunch of those and that's my true area of expertise and that's what I've narrowed my I, for a long time, was so involved with the physical side hustles, whether it would be doing starting fence companies or disinfectant companies or restaurants or, you know, inventing a photo booth or, you know, one of the many, 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 many physical things that I tried to accomplish and failed at a lot of. Um, the next is going to be digital. So if you watch this and you felt like this was of some value, the very next video that we're going to drop and we'll be doing an invite and sending it out and tagging people and letting people know is going to be about digital side hustles. And that's how I'm going to be able to share with you how I'm able to make six figures year after year after year. And I don't physically have to do anything for that. I, one day a month, maybe two days a month, I have to read some reports and I meet with one couple of customers. You know what I mean? Like, what is that? Like, it's nothing. You know what I mean? Like, how would you like to make six figures a year and not have to deal with anybody? And it come in month after month after month after month after month after month. Okay? So, with that said, be sure to click the link below, make comment, fill the survey out, uh, register to win this uh, awesome, amazing Mac Mini that we're going to be giving away. And, um, guys, I want to thank you so much, and I greatly appreciate your time. My name is Michael Fluharty, and I do hope that uh, this helped. All right? So with that, I'm going to be saying adios, and I'll see you later.